Hi, this is Andrea, Dealer Services Associate with Zillica, and in this video we're going to go over the X-Series. The X-Series is comprised of our XP-Series processors and our XD-Series processors. Let's first take a look at our XP-Series. Our XP-Series is a 40-bit floating-point DSP with 24-bit AD converters, and it samples at 96 kHz. It features dual IIR crossover filters, and there are a variety of parameters available for XP-Series. We'll get to that later in this tutorial. Next, let's look at our XD-Series processors. Our XD-Series processors are also 40-bit floating-point DSP with 24-bit AD converters. They also sample at 96 kHz, and they feature dual IIR crossover filters. The difference between XP series and XD series is that XD also has dual FIR filters and 8x8 AES EBU digital audio I.O. We'll also go over the parameters later in this tutorial. Both our X series processors use our X console software, which is a PC compatible software. So let's start by downloading the X console software. First, you need to go to our website, silica.com, and at the top, click on Products. You will see all our Silica products listed here. Navigate to your series, XD or XP series. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using an XD8080 processor. If you scroll down to the bottom, you will find our technical specifications, our model variants, downloads, product images, and tutorials. Click on Downloads, and here you can download product information, technical documentation, firmware, remote control, and the XConsole configuration software. Again, the XConsole software is PC compatible only, so if you're using Mac, I would recommend running Windows Parallel or using our Silica Designer software. However, there are some features that are not available in Silica Designer for X-Series. So let's download XConsole. All you have to do is click on this link and a downloads window will pop up. Save the file to a memorable location on your computer. Once you've downloaded the file, you'll see an XConsole v9.04 zip folder. Double click it to open it. Then click on the XConsole v9.04 file and navigate to the XConsole setup underscore v0904 file. This is the file that you need to install. So double click the file and run the file. An installation window will pop up and just follow the instructions to download XConsole. The last dialog of the install window will ask you if you want to install the USB driver. I would recommend installing this as well. Follow the instructions to install the USB driver. Once you have successfully installed XConsole, you'll see the desktop icon here. And simply double click the icon to open the software. So the first thing we're going to go over is how to connect your device. You can connect through USB, RS-232, or Cat5 Ethernet. I'm going to show you how to connect using USB or RS-232 first. So once you've opened the software at the top, click on Setup, then Port Connection. Make sure that the connection type is set as serial port slash USB. Make sure the device number is number one if you're using one processor only. Make sure the online box is checked. And COM port is the COM port of your device. So to find this information, click on Device Manager. And under the Ports, COM, and LPT tab, the Silicon Labs device is the X-Series processor. So please note the COM port at the end of this title. If you don't see your device listed in Device Manager, try unplugging and replugging your cable or try a different cable. In my example, it is COM3. So I'm going to change my COM port to COM port number three, then restart X console. 
and click Yes to connect to the device. You should see your device listed as connected at the top left. If you're having trouble connecting to your device, Make sure that the device is set as number one on your processor as well. So on the front panel of your processor, press enter, then use the menu arrows to scroll to the communication settings. Make sure that the device ID is set to one and that the baud rate is set to 115200. If you are still having trouble connecting to your device, you can check if there's another software taking the COM port. So with X console closed, go down to the start menu and type CMD. Open the command prompt program and type mode com number, where com number is a com port number shown in device manager for Scilabs. So in my example, I'm going to type mode com 3, then hit enter. If the port is available, it will show the serial port settings. If there is no information shown, that means that some software is taking up the COM port. Finally, if you're still having trouble connecting, try using Cat5 Ethernet. So now we're going to go over how to connect using Cat5 Ethernet. First, open up the XConsole software, then go up to the Setup tab and Port Connection. Change the connection type to Cat5 Ethernet. Make sure the device number is number 1 if you're using one device. Make sure that the online box is checked. And here you can see that the IP address can be edited. First, we're going to find our network settings of our computer so that we can set our IP address properly. Click on Command Prompt. To check our computer network settings, type in ipconfig. Then hit Enter. Your network settings will display and the IP address of your computer. In my example, my IP address is 10.0.0.137. So to set the static IP address of your device, it must follow the first three digits, but changing the fourth digit. So for my device, I'm going to set my IP address as 10.0.0.244. Then click OK. Now we're going to go to the front panel of our device and set the IP address the same as we did in the software. So press enter to enter the system menu and use the menu arrows to navigate to the ethernet menu. Here you'll see your IP address, gateway, and subnet. Set the IP address the same as you did in the software. For gateway, the first three digits also follow the IP address but the last digit is 1. So in my example, the gateway is 10.0.0.1. Finally, for subnet, the code is always 255.255.255.0. Once you have configured your settings, press Enter and Enter again to confirm. Then, reboot your device. Once it's booted up, open up X Console. Click Yes to connect to the device. You should see your device as connected. If you're having trouble connecting to your device, please try pinging your device. To do this, go up to Setup, Port Connection, and go into the command prompt. Type ping and the IP address of your device. In my example, I'm going to type ping 10.0.0.244, which is the IP address of my device. If you have information that populates, that means that you have a good connection.
If you see no information or request timeout, please try a different cable or connecting using USB or RS-232. Hopefully you have your device connected. And now we're going to go through how to firmware upgrade your device. So going back to the Silica website and your product page, scroll down to the bottom and under the downloads tab, select the appropriate firmware for your device. Save the file to a memorable location on your computer, and you'll find a zip folder saved onto your computer. Double click on the firmware file, and inside the file you'll find a disk image file. Click and drag this onto your desktop, and this is where you'll locate your file to upgrade the firmware. When upgrading the device, use USB connection. Open up your software. Make sure that your device number is connected and highlighted. Then go up to the Upgrade tab and click on Firmware. Upgrading firmware will erase all data from the device, so we recommend backing up and saving your data from your device before proceeding. When upgrading the device, use USB connection. Click Yes to proceed. Then select the disk image that you extracted from the firmware file. At the bottom of the device, you'll see this green bar and this is the device status. So it gives you information about the status of the device. Make sure you do not power off your device during this process. Doing so can corrupt your processor. Once the firmware upgrade is complete, you need to manually reboot your device. So turn it off and then on. You also need to restart X console for the changes to take effect. So on the front panel of your device, click enter to enter the system menu and scroll to the information menu. Here you'll see the firmware of your device. So now we're going to take a look at the software. At the top left of the software is the Start tab, and here you can log on to your device. If you forgot the password of your device, please go to genius.silica.com and type X-Series password in the search bar. Then click on the article that displays in the results. Next to the Start tab is Setup. And here we have our port connection where we can manage our connections. We also have device list, and this allows you to set the maximum number of devices in your network. Next, you have a copy, which allows you to copy from one channel to another channel. So here you can copy between your input channels or your output channels. You can select your source, first your device number and then your channel number, then the target, which is the destination that you would like to copy the source parameters to, select your device number, then the channel number, and then you have the list of modules that you can copy to the destination channel. Next we have link. Here we can link channels together. So the first section is link number, so this is kind of like your group number. Click enable to enable the link number. You can give your link a name. You can choose if you want to link the inputs or the outputs. Below that you can select the modules that you would like to link together. And to the right of that you can select the channels that you want to link together. So here, select the device number. You can also link devices together. Then select the channel that you would like to link together. So I'll link channels one and two together. Then I'll click OK. So now if I open my device and I toggle the mutes, you'll see that when I click the mute on input one, the mute on input two also turns off and on. So these channels are linked together. Next we have delay. 
and in electronics the delay is always fixed in time so here I have milliseconds but I can also change it to meters or feet if you calculate the delay in distance it varies depending on the density of air and that is why we also have the temperature drop down menu here The next tab is the Tools tab, and here you can synchronize from the device to the computer. Beside that is the Security tab. Here you can set or change the password of your device. Make sure that you write down your password, so if you ever forget your password, you have a place to reference your password. Underneath Password is Lock Controls, and this allows you to lock certain parameters in your device. The next tab is configuration. Here you can save your computer configuration settings and this includes your COM port number and your network settings. This file will be saved as an XCFG file. You can also open the XCFG file to recall your saved computer configuration settings. Under the Upgrade tab is our firmware, and this is where you can upgrade your firmware. We also have an X panel tab, and here you can set up your X panel. And lastly, we have a Help tab. The Help provides a help document for you. And you can also find the current version of software that you're running in the About tab. Now that we've gone through the menu, we're going to look at the device. So click on your connected device. In this window, you can see your device inputs on the left and your device outputs on the right. Each input has its own meter and parameters, and each output has its own meter as well and parameters. At the bottom right, we have a device status bar, and this will tell you the status of the device. And to the left of that, we have a presets, device, meters, and FIR filters button. Again, FIR filters are only available for XD series. So let's go through these buttons first. If I click on the presets button, it opens up a window, and here we can transfer our current settings. So there are three types of files in X console there is XCFG which we saw earlier, which is our computer configuration settings. We also have XDAT files, which is the parameter file. And we also have XPDT files, which is the preset files. So in the first section, we can transfer presets from our PC to our device. So you can open an XDAT file to transfer your parameter settings to your device. You can also open an XPDT file which transfers all presets to your device. The second section is transferring presets from your device to your PC. So this allows you to save all current settings to a XDAT file or save all presets from the device into an XPDT file on your computer. Thirdly, we can save presets from the device only. So we can recall a preset or we can save the current settings to a preset. Another thing that you can do is you can create an empty XDAT file. Zero out all your parameters and save your file and call it bypass. So basically, every time that you recall this file, your entire device is reset. So I'm going to save my current settings as an XDAT. Make sure I save all channels and parameters, then click OK and I'm going to name this file Bypass. Now anytime that I want to recall this empty file, I can open it in my presets. I can click Set Current Settings and find that Bypass file. Again, the status bar in the bottom right will tell you the status of your device. And my parameter settings are empty. Next, we have Device, and this displays your device information and your device network settings. Next, we have Meters, and this window allows you to monitor the signal. 
So you'll see at the top we have our inputs and at the bottom we have our outputs. The first group of meters on the left display the input audio RMS level. The second group of meters on the right display the signal compression for the compressor or limiter. Lastly, for XD series, we have our FIR filters, and this is where you can set the number of taps for each output pair. Now let's talk about the input and output channels. Let's start with the inputs, which are found on the left of the window. Each input comes with its own meter. We also have a mute, gain, delay, filter, and compressor. You can toggle the mutes from this window. You can also change the values of the gain. When you click on gain, it will display all input channels at the bottom. Our mutes are also found in this window. We can also change the polarity. Above that are faders for each one of our input channels. And at the top, we have our level. So we can slide the faders to change the values. We can also click and type in a value. Next to our gain is our delay. And in our delay window, we can see all the delays for our input channels. You can change it in milliseconds, meters, or feet. Simply select the box and you can either type in a value or use the arrows. The smaller the arrow, the smaller the changes. The bigger arrow will make bigger changes. Next to that is our filter. So here we have a visual graph at the top. We can also change the delay for that specific channel on the left, as well as the gain, polarity, and mute. The input channel also has a 8-band PEQ. We also have a high-pass filter, a low-pass filter, and a compressor that you can change within this window. Our input channels also have a 31-band GEQ. And for the PEQ and GEQ, you can reset them or bypass them. Again, you can click on a parameter and use the arrows to make changes. The smaller the arrow, the smaller the change. The larger the arrow, the bigger the change. You can also make changes by clicking and dragging the nodes on this visual graph. And finally, we have a compressor. You can view the compressor for all input channels as well, and simply use the arrows to make changes to the values. Next, we have our output channels. Each output channel also has their own meter. Each output channel has a mixer. The mixer sets the input channel source for the current output channel. It can be used to mix the input source in decibels or disable it. If more than one input source is enabled, they will be added together as a source for the current output channel. So at the bottom of this window, it lists your outputs. To make a change, you can click and drag a fader, or you can type in a value at the top. You'll notice that if I select multiple channels, that the mixer displays the input channels that are mixed to the output channel. Next to mixer, we also have a gain, which functions identically to the input gain. You have your channels, your mute, polarity, your faders, and the level at the top. We also have our delay for each output channel. We have our filter, which you'll notice that we do not have a 31 band GEQ. We have our delay, gain, polarity, mute. We have our mixer displayed here. We have our eight band PEQ, our high pass filter, low pass filter. And instead of a compressor, we have a limiter. 
And again, you can make changes by clicking and dragging nodes on the graph. Like I said, instead of a compressor, we have a limiter at the end. And here you can set the limiter for each output channel and change the values as desired. And lastly, we have a mute for every output channel. So this covers our X-Series tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you are interested in controlling your X-Series processor with our X-Touch app, which is a PC, Mac, iOS, and Android compatible app, please visit our YouTube channel. We actually have a tutorial on how to control your X-Series using our X-Touch app. And this uses our new Silica Designer software, which is a PC and Mac compatible software. However, there are some features that are not available for X-Series in Silica Designer. Lastly, we're releasing a new DSP in 2020 called the X2. And the X2 is a 40-bit floating point DSP with 32-bit converters and it samples at 96 kilohertz. The X2 is a modular DSP meaning that you can configure your inputs and your outputs as needed. For more information about the X2, please visit our website at zillica.com. And thank you so much for watching this video.